Hello, welcome to my channel. My name is Andrea and today I'm sharing all of the best DIYs I've shared on my channel throughout 2021. We have spring DIYs, fall, Christmas, everyday decor, and everything else in between. So I hope you enjoy the best DIYs of 2021. For this DIY, you'll need an empty cardboard box, some twine, a pillowcase, and hot glue. I'm gluing the twine around each side of the box and for the first layer I'm making sure the twine is low enough down so the cardboard box isn't poking through the bottom. And for the first couple layers of the twine I'm putting a lot of glue around just to make sure every part of the twine is sticking down to the cardboard box. But as I go along I'm putting less and less glue just on the ends or maybe in the middle and sticking it down like that. Now that the twine is a couple inches from the top of the box, I'm cutting off the end and gluing it in place. Now I'm taking a pillowcase and putting it inside out. And once it's inside out, I fold it down the sides a few times. And now I'm putting it inside the cardboard box and stretching the pillowcase over the corners. And now I'm pulling it down to cover up all of the empty cardboard space. I found I didn't fold down the pillowcase quite enough, so there was a lot of excess pillowcase in the middle of the basket. So instead of taking it all off, I'm just pulling the pillowcase over and making a couple more layers around all of the edges and pulling it tight over each corner. And this is our beautiful twine basket using only an old cardboard box, some twine from the dollar store, and a pillowcase. For the next DIY, I'm making this geometric spray painted vase. I'm using this vase from Dollar Tree, some gold spray paint, masking tape, decorative gems to go inside the vase, and some fake flowers. I'm putting strips of masking tape over the vase to make different designs and geometric shapes. I would recommend using some kind of painter's tape instead of the masking tape. It didn't work quite as well as I was hoping for with the spray paint, but it does work if that's all you have. I stuffed the vase with some paper towel so I wouldn't spray inside the vase. And now I'm spray painting it with the gold spray paint. Now it's time to peel off all the tape. You can see a lot of the lines aren't super crisp, which is why I suggested using the painter's tape instead of the masking tape. Now to put the flowers inside and fill the vase with all of these little gems and decorative rocks. Next up, I'm making this textured ceramic looking vase. I have this vase from Dollar Tree, some baking powder, pink and white acrylic paint, and some greenery. I'm mixing the white and pink paint together until I get the color I'm looking for.
adding in some baking powder to the paint, which will give it a ceramic chalk paint textured look. I'm starting with a tablespoon of baking powder and mixing it together. You can see it has all of these air bubbles in it and it looks almost whipped. I'm adding some more paint and then some more baking powder until I get the consistency and the amount of paint that I want to cover the vase. Now with a foam brush, I'm covering the vase with the paint mixture. I ended up doing two or three coats, I think, on the vase. Now that it's dry, you can see how textured the paint is on the vase here. Adding that baking powder in there really gives it a unique look that you wouldn't get otherwise if you just used the paint. Now to add the greenery inside, and here is our finished vase. Next up, I'm making this geometric succulent holder. All you need for this DIY are some straws gold spray paint, and some hot glue. The only straws they had at my Dollar Tree were these bendy straws, so I'm going to cut them off at the bendy part, so I just have the straight straws. And I'm doing this for nine straws. To start with, I'm gluing three straws together to make a triangle. As I'm gluing the straws together, I'm squeezing the tops together to form a point for the triangle. You really want to make sure you're squeezing the straws together and then holding them in place for a few seconds while the glue dries to make sure everything is as stable as possible. And now I'm making another triangle with three more straws. Now I'm attaching one more straw to the top corner of one of the triangles, and this part will be the top of our structure. I'm now cutting three little straw pieces that are about two inches long each, and I'm gluing these to each corner of the bottom triangle. Now it's time to glue both of the straw structures together. I'm adding the final straw here for the last piece of the structure. Here's what it looks like all glued together, and now we just have to spray paint it. I did a couple of coats just to make sure all sides of the straws were covered in spray paint. So I spray painted one side of it and then let it dry and turned it over and spray painted again. And this is what it looks like dry. And I had this little succulent from the dollar store so I just stuck it inside. I'll be making this floral flower pot. You will need a small terracotta pot from Dollar Tree, some floral napkins, Mod Podge, and white acrylic paint. I'm starting with painting the pot white using a foam brush, and I ended up doing three coats to cover the whole pot. taking one of these floral napkins I found at Dollar Tree and unfolding it. I'm now cutting out all of the flowers and I'm mixing it up so sometimes I'll just have a single flower by itself and then other times I'm grouping a few of them together. <music> There is 
also another layer to these napkins, which you'll want to make sure to peel off. I'm cutting out all the flowers, so not much of the white space is left showing, but you could leave that if you wanted to, especially if you painted your pot white. I'm now applying some Mod Podge with a foam brush to the areas where I'm going to be placing the flowers. And I'm pressing the flower onto the pot and then smoothing it down with my fingers and then adding another layer of Mod Podge on top. I found sometimes if I was a little bit too rough with the foam brush, then I would rip some of the paper napkin. So just be careful with that, but you can always press it back down with your fingers. I'm just placing all these flowers around the pot and doing a mix of the larger sections and some of the smaller flowers. Now I'm going to let this dry for an hour or so before adding another layer of Mod Podge over top of all the flowers. Now that the final layer of Mod Podge has dried and all the flowers have set onto the pot, it's time to put in these fake flowers from Dollar Tree. And that is our finished floral pot. Next Dollar Tree Spring DIY, I'm going to be making this blue speckled mason jar vase. You'll just need a mason jar, some blue acrylic paint, along with some brown and black acrylic paint, and some twine. To start off with, I'm painting my mason jar with the blue paint. And I ended up having to do four or five coats to get the opacity that I wanted on the jar. To get the speckled look, I'm mixing some brown and black acrylic paint with an old toothbrush and then I'm getting the paint all over the toothbrush and then using my finger to flick the paint off the toothbrush onto the mason jar. I'm now wrapping some thin twine all around the top of the mason jar and securing it in place with hot glue. I'm just using some scissors to trim off some of the excess little threads from the twine. And here is the finished speckled mason jar. And now it's time to add in some flowers. I got these bunches of baby's breath from Dollar Tree and I'm putting them in here. I think the white and the blue look so pretty and so springy together. I'm making this burlap covered vase with lavender. I'm using this candle holder from Dollar Tree along with some leftover burlap I had from Dollarama and this lavender also from Dollar Tree. Since I'm working with leftover burlap scraps I had laying around, I'm cutting it with scissors and just folding it around this candle holder to make it fit and then I'm gluing the sides together. The idea is to kind of make it look like a little burlap sack. Then I'm 
just putting the lavender inside and taking a piece of thin jute cord and tying a bow around it. I'll be making this rope tray. I got this burner cover that I'll be transforming into a decorative tray. I got this twisted rope at Canadian Tire, but of course you could use the jute cord from Dollar Tree. And then I'll also be using this metallic gold paint from Michaels. You can see my burner cover already has a bit of paint on it because at first I tried spray painting it, but I actually ran out of spray paint. So I went with plan B and I'm using this metallic paint and it actually worked really well. I wasn't too sure with the first coat, but once I let it dry and started going over it again, I think it turned out really good and covered the whole thing really nicely. I also painted the sides because I wasn't sure how much of it I was going to cover with the rope. I'm now hot gluing the rope onto the tray, starting on the outside and going around in circles until I reach the middle. I'm just hot gluing small sections at a time, then pressing the rope into the tray. I started on the flat part of the burner cover, and then once I get to the middle and cut off the rope, I'm gonna go back and do the edges. Using an X-Acto knife to cut off the end of the rope and then I'm putting a dollop of hot glue in the center and pressing in the end of the rope. And as I said before, now I'm taking the rope again and going around the edges of this burner cover tray. I'm doing two layers of rope on the edges just to cover that up. I decided I also wanted to cover the outer edges, so that's what I'm doing here. Adding some hot glue to the sides and then gluing the rope in place. For this section, I did four layers of rope stacked on top of each other. Once I got to the bottom layer of the rope, I figured out where I wanted my handles to go. Then I put some hot glue in those places and lifted up the rope to form a handle. I then tried to make it as even as possible on the other side of the tray and made another handle. Now I'm just taking some scissors and trimming off all the little excess bits from the rope. And here is the finished tray. The next DIY is a glass hobnail vase. I'm using this rounded vase from Dollar Tree along with some white spray paint and these pearl stickers from Dollar Tree. These stickers are attached in rows, so I'm peeling them off one row at a time. Then I'm cutting off one little pearl sticker at a time, so it still has the adhesive backing on it. One thing I wasn't super careful with at first, but then I had to go back and fix, was making sure to cut off the adhesive parts on either side of the sticker, because you don't want any of those showing. Now I'm sticking all of these little pearl stickers onto the vase. I only ended up needing a few rows of these stickers to cover the whole vase, so you definitely only need one sheet. For the first row of stickers, I'm just spacing them out as evenly as possible. And then for the second row, I'm also spacing the stickers out, but I'm arranging them so each of the stickers is centered between two stickers in the previous row. Once all the stickers are placed all over the vase, it's time to spray paint. I ended up doing a few coats to make sure I covered all the stickers and the glass. I took a couple of succulents from Dollar Tree and added them into the vase. I'll be making this large farmhouse twine carrot. You'll need aluminum foil, twine, reindeer moss, masking tape, and lace ribbon. First, I'm ripping off a piece of aluminum foil and rolling it into a tube pressing it together at the bottom to give it a tapered carrot shape. I'm now taking another piece of foil and wrapping it around to make the carrot a little thicker. 
and I'm adding another piece of foil, but this time I'm only wrapping it around the top of the carrot just to make that part a little wider. I'm taking some masking tape and wrapping it all around the aluminum foil to make it easier for the twine to stick to it and also to help give the carrot a little more shape. I'm now using hot glue to attach the twine to the foil carrot, wrapping it around until the whole thing is covered. I will be going back over and adding more layers of twine so you don't need to worry if there are any little blank spots. I'm adding more layers of twine to the carrot, making sure to add more to the top where I want it to be thicker. I'm going to use this reindeer moss as a carrot topper. I'm using hot glue to keep it all together because the reindeer moss can make a bit of a mess, but I'm just adding more glue and then pressing down the moss to make the carrot top. I'm taking this burlap lace ribbon I got at Dollar Tree and ripping off just the lace part, then gluing it around the carrot. And I made a little bow with some of the jute twine and I'm gluing that onto the lace. For my next carrot DIY, I'm making another twine one, but this time I'm making a smaller carrot and using a different technique. I'm taking some of this tissue paper I found at Dollar Tree, along with some twine and a piece of greenery I took off a bunch of fake flowers. I'm folding the tissue paper into a square and then folding it into a triangle and then I'm folding it again into a smaller triangle and now I'm rolling it up and I'm trying to make it somewhat into a carrot cone shape where it's smaller on the bottom and then larger on the top. Then I'm taking some masking tape and wrapping it all around the tissue paper. I'm really using the masking tape to help me shape the tissue paper into a carrot. So I have the larger bit on top and then going to more of a point at the bottom. And now using some hot glue, I'm attaching the twine to the carrot and wrapping it all around until the whole thing is covered. And again, I'm gonna be doing a couple layers of the twine. I'm adding a little dollop of glue at the top and then sticking in this bit of greenery for my carrot top. And now I'm finishing up the top of the carrot here, just wrapping the twine all around, making sure all of the masking tape is covered, then going back around and doing another layer of the twine over the carrot. And I'm making sure that I have more twine at the top and less at the bottom to get that tapered shape. I ripped off another piece of this lace from the burlap lace ribbon and I'm kind of pressing it together onto the carrot with some hot glue to make it look like a little bow. Next I'll be making this no sew farmhouse fabric carrot. For this DIY you'll need a piece of fabric. I'm using this gray and white baby blanket from Dollar Tree, some twine, and hot glue. To start I'm cutting out a square piece of the blanket. Fold the square in half then cut diagonally from the bottom right corner up to the top left corner. This will make two triangles each of which can be made into a carrot. Roll the fabric into a cone shape, then hot glue in place. You could also sew this if you wanted to, but if you're not into sewing, then gluing works just fine. I'm folding over the edges of the fabric to give it a cleaner look, then gluing everything in place. Make sure when you're gluing to leave the center of the cone hollow because we're stuffing it with more fabric. I'm taking scraps of the same fabric, rolling it up, and stuffing it inside the cone. You could also use pillow stuffing or anything else you have to stuff the carrot. To make the carrot topper, I'm using twine and wrapping it around my hand 30 times, then cutting it off. And I'm taking another piece of twine and wrapping it around the top of the loop, then cutting through the loop to make a tassel, which will become the carrot top. I'm gluing the tassel into the top of the carrot and folding the fabric around the tassel. I'm also taking another piece of twine and making a bow to tie around the top of the carrot. This DIY boho macrame wall hanging is made with supplies from Dollar Tree. I'm using one of the metal wreath forms from Dollar Tree and I'm separating the rings using wire cutters. I'm using the smallest ring for this DIY and spray painting it rose gold with spray paint from Michaels. I'm using this cotton twine from Dollar Tree to make the macrame section of this wreath. I cut 34 strands of twine that were 40 inches long each. 
I'm folding a piece of the string in half, then placing it underneath the wire wreath with the folded part toward me. Then I'm taking the ends of the string and putting them over the wire, through the loop, and pulling tight. This is called a lark's knot. I'm continuing to do this knot with all the strands of twine all along the bottom of the wreath. Now that all the Lark's knots are complete, I'm making square knots, which use four strands each. I'm taking strand number one and putting it over strands two and three, and under strand four, making an L shape. Then I'm taking strand four and putting it under strands two and three, and under strand one, pulling it up through the loop. Pull on strands one and four on either side to tighten the knot. Then take strand four on the right and fold it over strands two and three and under strand one. Then take strand one and put it under strands two and three and under strand four, pulling it up through the loop. Now pull on the two strands on either side to tighten and that is one square knot complete. Continue these steps for all the strands until you have square knots all across your whole wreath. Once this row of square knots is complete, I'm going to make another row, but this time I'm only going to put the knots part way up. Again, fold strand one over strands two and three and under strand four. Tuck strand four under strands two and three and under strand one, pulling up through the loop. This time when tightening, don't tighten the knot all the way up to the top. I stopped mine a couple inches down from the previous square knot. Then take strand 4 and fold it over strands 2 and 3 and under strand 1. Take strand 1 and tuck it under strands 2 and 3 and under strand 4, pulling up through the loop. Tighten the strands, pulling up to the first part of the knot. And repeat these steps all along the rest of the strands. For the last row, we're going to be making more square knots, but this time we'll be skipping a couple of strands. Push the first two strands off to the side because for this square knot, we're going to be starting with the third strand. Now that those strands are out of the way, we're just going to be repeating all the same steps as before. Again, I'll be tying these square knots so they don't go all the way up to the previous knots, but so they're a couple inches down. And once you've tied all the square knots all the way across, you should have two strands on either side that are not part of the knot. Now that all the knots are done, I'm untangling all the strands and making sure they're laying flat so I can trim them.
I'm cutting the strands into a slight V shape at the bottom. I got these flowers from Dollarama and I'm cutting them with wire cutters, then using floral wire to attach them to the wreath. You could arrange the flowers any way you want, whether it's all around the whole circle, on the bottom, or on the sides. I'm focusing the flowers just on the left side of the wreath. Here is the finished boho macrame dollar tree wall hanging. This could easily fit with any season depending on which flowers you choose. For this DIY, we'll be making a wooden planter box with some painted stencils and fake succulents. I'm using this wooden box I got from Dollarama. It actually came with some drawers inside, but I took those out for this DIY. And I'll also be using some brown acrylic paint. These stencils I got at Dollar Tree, along with some succulents and Spanish moss. To start with, I'm mixing some of the brown paint with water, and I'm doing this to give the box more of a stained wood look. I'm going all around and painting all the sides with this paint and water mixture. After the first coat, I realized I had forgotten to sand it, so I quickly went over and sanded the whole thing, and luckily it didn't take off too much of the color, so that wasn't a problem. And now I'm adding another coat all around to each side. I'm also painting the inside of the box, even though you're not actually going to see any of this because I'm covering it all up with moss, but I just thought it made it look more finished and it wasn't too hard to do. Now I'm placing these stencils I got at Dollar Tree onto the front of the box. I have a bird, a butterfly, and then some flowers with another little butterfly. I'm using a foam brush with some pink, yellow, and blue acrylic paint. Once the paint is all dry, I'm peeling off the stencils, and I'm really happy with how this turned out. I think they look really cute. Now I'm taking the Spanish moss and just stuffing it inside of each of the three compartments. Then I'm adding in one succulent to each of the sections. And here's the finished succulent planter box. Super easy and super affordable. For this DIY, we'll be making this spring bunting, perfect to add to your mantle or anywhere in your home. I'll be using this burlap I got at Michael's, and now I'm using a ruler and a pencil to draw out all the triangles for the bunting. I first drew a horizontal triangle on the burlap, as you might be able to see but then I switched to drawing vertical ones so I could fit more on the burlap without wasting space. Each of my triangles are about three and a half inches wide by four and a half inches long. I'm making six triangles to fit the word spring. To make the bunting more sturdy, I'm mixing some Mod Podge with water and brushing it all over my burlap. I did this over top of two scrap pieces of paper so I didn't make too much of a mess. I let it dry overnight and now you might be able to tell it's more stiff and not so flimsy as burlap usually is. So this will make it a lot easier for making the bunting. Now it's time to cut out all the triangles. I'm making some stencil letters with my Cricut, but you could always freehand it with acrylic paint or you could use some stencils or letters from the dollar store. Anything is totally up to you. I measured on the triangles how big I wanted the letters to be. So now I'm just adjusting those sizes. I ungrouped the letters so I can manipulate them all separately. To create the stencil, I'm going to need a shape behind each of the letters and I could have chosen a triangle, whatever, I just went with a square. I changed the color of the square to make it easier to see. I'm going to select the box with the letter and then hit slice. And now I can pull away each of the layers and I'm left with what you can see looks like an S stencil. 
I continued slicing all the letters and these are the stencils that we're left with. Click on make it, then select premium vinyl as the material. Now that all the stencils are cut out, I'm going to peel it off the mat and weed them out. Now normally when you're weeding, you want to get rid of all the negative space and you'll be left with your letter or image, but for a stencil, we want to take out the letter, so we're just left with the box around it. I cut out a small piece of this Duck brand contact paper, and once I cut out each of the letters, I'm going to peel off the contact paper and stick it on. I'm using my Cricut scraper tool to press the contact paper down onto the vinyl, and now I'm peeling the white backing off so the vinyl is stuck to the clear part, then pressing that onto the burlap. I'm using my scraper tool again just to make sure the vinyl is really stuck down to the burlap and it also helps when peeling off the clear part because you don't want to take up the black vinyl as well. Now I'm taking a foam brush and some acrylic paint and painting on the stencil. I'm going to keep repeating all the same steps for each of the letters, pressing down the contact paper and transferring it to the burlap. The paint colors I chose for my stencils are purple, yellow, pink, and blue. I will say the purple doesn't show up as well on the burlap as the other colors just because the purple is darker and not as bright. So if I was to do it again, I might stick with the yellow, pink, and blue. Once all the paint is dry, I'm peeling off the stencils and I'm left with the letters. To make holes in each of the triangles in order to hang them up, I'm using my Cricut weeder tool and just poking through and making two holes per triangle. Once I did this on one of the triangles, I used it as sort of a template to line up with the other triangles to try to get the holes in the same places on each of them. I'm using this cotton twine from Dollar Tree to string all of the triangles together. I did wrap a piece of tape around the end of the twine to make it easier to pull through the holes. I'm starting on the back side of the triangle and pulling through and then across. And this gives you a bit of the string across the top of the triangle. But if you didn't want that, you could start the opposite way from the front and go behind. Sometimes I did have to go back with the weeder tool and poke through the hole again just to make it a little bit bigger and easier to get the string through. And here's the finished spring bunting. I love the colors of this. I think it's so simple but so fun. For this DIY, we're making two of these dollar store topiaries. I'll be using two of these one and a half inch styrofoam balls, along with these two moss balls, some moss, a wooden dowel rod from Dollarama, and some white glue. The styrofoam balls will be the tops of both topiaries, so I'm using a pencil to make a hole in the bottom. Then I'm pushing the dowel rod through just to make the hole bigger, and this way I know where to glue the moss onto the ball. I'm squeezing some white glue onto the styrofoam ball, then spreading it around with a foam brush, and I'm taking clumps of this dollar store moss and sticking it onto the ball. There really is no rhyme or reason to any of this. I'm just taking pieces of the moss and sticking it all over the styrofoam ball, trying to cover up all the white spaces. You could also use a hot glue gun for this. I found the white craft glue worked really well, so that was fine with me. And that way you don't get all of the little glue gun strings hanging everywhere, which is nice. As you can see, I'm just gluing all the moss all around and avoiding the hole at the bottom. I'm now taking a piece of floral foam and cutting it down to fit inside this plant pot. These came in a set of three at Dollarama and I'll just be using two of them today. And I'm painting them with this gray spray paint. Along with the styrofoam moss ball that I made, 
I'm also using these moss balls from the dollar store just to give the topiaries a bit of a different look, some variety. And again, I'm using a pencil to make holes in the moss ball. Then I'm going in with the rod and sticking it through the ball. I'm poking this dowel rod into the floral foam and then adding the moss ball we made earlier to the top. And now I'm using this Spanish moss to fill up the pot and cover up the floral foam. I have this burlap lace ribbon I got at the dollar store and I'm cutting off a piece and wrapping it around the planter. Now I'm just hot gluing it in place. Then I'll take a piece of jute twine and make a bow and glue it on the front of the burlap ribbon. I ended up making two identical topiaries and this is the final result. If you can't find any of the finished moss balls, you could always make both of them with different sized styrofoam balls or different colored moss. Whatever you can find, that will work. I'll be making these two types of leaves using jute twine and string, starting with some jute pampas grass. You will need jute twine and skewers or wooden dowels. I cut a piece of cardboard that was 16 centimeters long and I'm wrapping the twine around it 50 times. Slide the twine off the cardboard, then cut the loops on both ends. Each of these bundles will make one leaf. I'm now tying each piece of twine onto the skewer. I hot glued the last piece of twine on top of the skewer so I could have a piece sticking out the top. I also hot glued the bottom piece of twine in place. I didn't glue any of the other pieces, but you could do so if you wanted to make it a little more secure. And now it's time to start taking apart the twine strands. I'm unraveling each strand and pulling it apart. I was a little more careful with this at first, but then I realized the more you pull at it and take it apart, the better. This part is definitely time consuming, but it is totally worth it. Now I'm taking a brush and brushing out all the strands. This is why it's so important to take apart all the strands as much as possible beforehand because it makes it so much easier to brush out. You can see the difference between the leaf that has been pulled apart and brushed and the one that hasn't. I'm now doing the same thing to the other leaf and I'm also trimming the edges to create a bit more of a shape. To keep this shape, I'm taking this hairspray and lightly spraying all over the twine, then lightly going over it with my hands to form the shape I want. The one on the left has not been hairsprayed yet, and the one on the right has, so you can see what a big difference it makes. Before I spray the other leaf with the hairspray, I'm just going back and making sure I have all the strands pulled out and fluffed like I want them, and just brushing it out again. Then I'm tidying up the edges with some scissors and then going over with the hairspray and smoothing it down with my hands. Then those two leaves were complete. To create a monstera plant leaf, I'm using cotton twine from Dollar Tree and floral wire from Michaels along with a skewer or wooden dowel. First cut off a piece of floral wire and form it into a leaf shape, then tie the ends together. I tied the end of the twine onto the wire and now I'm wrapping the twine around the wire until the whole thing is covered. I'm now covering my skewer with the same cotton twine. I am hot gluing the twine in place along the way to keep it from getting loose and unraveling. Once the skewer is covered in the twine, it's time to glue it to the back of the leaf. I cut off a long piece of twine, fold it in half, and glued it to the top of the leaf at the back. 
take the bundle of twine on the right and place it over the middle and under the left section. Then take the twine on the left and place it over the middle and under the right section. Now take both sections of twine and swap sides underneath the leaf. Then turn the leaf over, add some hot glue, and turn the leaf over again and pull the two strands tight. I did make a whole other leaf without adding hot glue along the way and it did not turn out well. It became very loose and came apart. So although this is an extra step, I would recommend doing the hot glue along the way. I'm showing you this pattern for the twine going over and under a couple of times because it can be a little confusing at first, but once you get the rhythm of going over then under one side and over and under the other side then swapping sides underneath it does get a lot easier once you get to the bottom of the leaf then trim off the ends and i just folded them up and glued them at the back here is what all of the leaves look like together. I just styled them in this vase that I made in a previous video. For this DIY, I'm going to be making a summer themed wreath full of sunflowers and butterflies. To start with, I'll be using one of these metal wreath forms from Dollar Tree. It's missing a couple of rings that I took off for previous DIYs. And I'll also be using this burlap I got at Michael's. I'm now wrapping the burlap around the wreath form and I'm going to be hot gluing it in place as I go. Every time I wrap the burlap around the wreath, I pull it to the side a little bit so it's at more of a diagonal. And then I'm continuing all around until the whole thing is covered. I got this wooden truck at Dollar Tree and I'm going to be painting it using this green paint from Walmart. I also mixed some white acrylic paint in with the green to make a lighter green color because I'll be painting some parts of the truck with the lighter color and some parts with the darker color. Going in with the darker green and painting all the main parts of the truck. And now I'm painting the center of the wheels with this silver gray color, then painting the tires black. For the back of the truck, I'm using this burnt umber mixed with some of the white acrylic paint. Then I'm using just the burnt umber by itself for that center part there. Now I'm just arranging the truck on the wreath along with the flowers to see whereabouts I want it to go. And now I'm gluing all the flowers to the back of the truck, then gluing the truck down onto the wreath. I got these cute bee stickers at Dollar Tree and I'm taking the watering can sticker and putting it on the door of the truck. I'm also using these laser cut butterflies I got at Dollar Tree. They are so cute, so detailed and intricate and I'll be painting two of them pink and one of them yellow. Painting them was a little bit tricky just because it's so intricate and there's all these little crevices everywhere but I just went over with my paintbrush and did a first coat and then went back over and kind of got in between all the little crevices as much as I could. And now I'm gluing them down onto the wreath. I'm taking three of these larger sunflowers. I got all the sunflowers at Dollarama and I'm placing them on the bottom of the wreath. At first I tried to just poke them through the burlap but then later on, I decided to secure them even more with some hot glue. I'm now taking this burlap ribbon I got at Walmart and tying it around the top of the wreath. And here's the finished burlap sunflower wreath, perfect for summer. I love the colors with the bluish green and the yellow and then the little pops of pink from the butterfly. This DIY is a bright, fun, colorful floral wreath. I'm using a floral foam wreath form from Dollar Tree along with a bunch of bright fun flowers from Dollarama. I love these flowers because they also include a few little butterflies, which is fun. I'm taking my wire cutters and cutting off all the stems and then poking them through the wreath. 
The great thing about these foam wreath forms is that they're so easy to poke things through and arrange however you want. I'm using a variety of flowers, anything that is bright and bold. I'm also mixing in a couple of white flowers and I arranged everything so the two butterflies are on either side of the wreath. I used some of this floral wire to help tie down some of the pieces, like this large leaf. You could also use hot glue. I'm turning over the wreath and just making sure nothing is sticking out too far, folding over the stems or trimming them off as needed. To hang the wreath, I'm taking this jute cord from Dollar Tree and making a loop at the top. And I'm securing it to the wreath using hot glue. I wanted to make a little banner in the center of the wreath to have the word welcome on it. So I'm using this burlap ribbon from Walmart and I'm cutting it to be the right size to go across the wreath. I made a stencil that said welcome using my Cricut. And if you want to see a more detailed video on how I make stencils with my Cricut, then I'll link another video up in the cards and also down in the description box. I'm weeding out the word welcome and being very careful not to take the little tiny pieces along with it, including the center of the E and also the O. I actually used the Dollar Tree vinyl for this and I didn't notice any difference between this and Cricut vinyl, so that was nice. And I'm also using the Dollar Tree transfer paper and laying that over top of my stencil and then transferring that to the burlap ribbon. This transfer paper was really sticky and I thought it worked really well. Now I'm peeling the stencil up with my transfer paper, then sticking it onto the burlap. This part was definitely the trickiest, trying to remove the transfer paper from the burlap and the vinyl. I'm not sure if it was because the transfer paper was too sticky or if it's just because of the font and how small it was, but I did get it to work with some patience and using my Cricut tools to press down on the vinyl as I was peeling up the transfer paper. You really wanna be careful not to lose these little pieces inside the letters since we are going to be painting over top of this and using it as a stencil. But if those little pieces come up, it's no problem. Just take one of your little tools and stick it back in place. Now that I have my stencil all ready to go, I'm taking some white acrylic paint and a paintbrush and painting over the letters. I did a couple of coats of this, but I wish I had maybe done a little bit more because it wasn't quite as dark as I wanted it to be when I peeled off the stencil. I'm now going back with my paintbrush and going over the letters with a little bit more of the white paint just to darken it up. And it's obviously better if you do this while the stencil is still on, but it still worked out pretty well. Now it's time to attach the burlap ribbon onto the wreath. I'm taking my hot glue gun and attaching the ribbon to either side. Here is the completed summer themed floral wreath. I loved this wreath on its own with all the colorful flowers, but I think adding the welcome banner in the center took it to the next level. I love how the burlap looks with the white lettering and I think it complements the bright flowers really well. For this DIY, we'll be making a hanging boho plant stand. I'm using these 9 inch embroidery hoops from Michaels and I'm separating them from each other and I'll be painting both hoops with this rose gold metallic spray paint. This took a couple coats to get all the sides of the hoops painted. I'm now arranging them so they form a sphere with one hoop inside the other at a 90 degree angle. Then I'm taking a pencil and marking where the hoops intersect so I can glue them together. I'm adding the glue to the top and bottom of the hoops, then taking these Dollar Tree clamps and holding the hoops together while the glue sets. I'm now taking some wood beads in various sizes and lining them up in the order that I want them to go. I'm using this white acrylic paint and I'm threading all the beads onto a skewer and painting them white with a paintbrush. I put a tiny bead at the end of the skewer to make sure none of my beads fell off. 
While that dries, I'm taking this cotton twine from Dollar Tree and wrapping it around my fingers 20 times, then cutting it off. Now I'm taking another piece of twine and tying it around the top of the loop, then cutting through the bottom of the loop to make a tassel. I have another piece of twine that I'm poking through the top of the tassel, and I'm using a pencil to make it easier, and I'm tying a knot at the top. Now I'm threading the beads onto the twine. I put a piece of tape onto the end of the twine to make it easier to thread the beads through, and now I'm tying the tassel onto the bottom of the two hoops. And I'm also hot gluing it in place just to make sure it's secure. Next, I'll be using this cork trivet from Dollar Tree. I'm placing it inside the sphere to get an idea of where I want it to sit. And I'm making marks on the trivet with a pencil so I know where to place the glue. Now I'm putting hot glue onto the trivet, then placing it inside the sphere, making sure the sides of the trivet are touching the sides of the hoops so they stick in place. I did have to add some extra glue once the trivet was in place, and it did make it a little bit easier to do this one side at a time while the trivet was inside the hoops because then the hot glue wasn't drying too quickly. For the next part of this DIY, I'll be creating a braided hanger with this nautical rope. First, I'm taking apart the rope and separating it into three strands. I taped the top in place and now I'm braiding all the strands together. I'm now gluing this braided strand to the top of the plant stand. And here is the finished modern boho hanging plant stand. I just put one of my fake succulents on there and I think it looks super cute. This DIY is super easy and fun for summer. We are creating this pineapple tumbler. I'm starting with this plain clear tumbler. I got this one at the grocery store, but you can find these anywhere. I will be creating this pineapple design with my Cricut. I found this free pineapple SVG online. I resized it to be the size I need to fit onto the tumbler. I'm ungrouping the pineapple so the top is separated from the bottom. Then I'm moving the bottom down just a little bit to separate it even more from the top section. Now I'm selecting both sections again and reattaching them. Once I clicked on make it, I'm moving the pineapple down a bit on the digital mat. So the five centimeter line is between the two sections of the pineapple. This is not necessary. It's just going to make it a lot easier when lining up the two colors of vinyl on my Cricut mat. I'm using Oracle 651 permanent vinyl in the colors mint and gold for this project. I'm cutting out little sections of each color, then sticking them onto the mat. Looking at the virtual mat in Cricut Design Space really helps to line up where each color needs to go. That is why I moved the pineapple down a bit so I could more easily line up where the two colors needed to meet in the middle. I'm smoothing them down with my scraper tool and now it's time to cut. I'm now weeding out the pineapple design and using the two colors at once worked out so well. I'm so happy with how this looks. You can see the top of the pineapple is gold while the bottom is this really pretty mint color. This was actually my first time cutting two colors at once for a design and I'm so happy with how it turned out. I'm now taking my transfer tape and transferring the pineapple design onto the tumbler cup. I'm lining up the pineapple as best I can onto the cup so it's nice and straight and centered. And then I'm smoothing it down with my fingers and pressing everything in place with the scraper tool going over each of the little pineapple pieces to make sure everything is secured to the cup. And of course the final step is peeling off that transfer tape. And there you have the finished pineapple cup ready for all your summer drinks. This DIY is a macrame leaf wall hanging. I'm using cotton twine from Dollar Tree along with this mustard colored yarn and a navy blue yarn. To hang up this wall hanging, I'll be using this wood dowel from the dollar store. 
I measured two strands of the yarn that are three meters long each. I'm folding each of the strands in half and placing them on the wood dowel, and I'm tying each of them into a lark's knot. To make the lark's knot, tuck the folded part of the strand behind the dowel and weave the tails of the strand through the loop and pull tight. Now I'm tying half square knots down the strands. Take strand one and place it over strands two and three and under strand four. Now take strand four and place it under strands two and three and up through the loop formed by strand one. Continue repeating these steps always starting with tucking strand one over the middle two strands and you will soon see a spiral shape start forming. At a certain point, you will see the first strand no longer lays flat as it's starting to really want to twist over to the other side. Once it's really twisty, just rotate the strands in a circle so the one on the left goes over to the right and the one on the right moves to the left. Then continue the same pattern as before, creating all the half square knots. Continue making the spiral strand until it's the length you want it to be. At the end of the spiral strand is where the leaf will be hanging from. I made each of the strands slightly different lengths, so all the leaves will be at different heights. Now for the first macrame leaf. I'm cutting 26 strands of the yarn into 25 centimeter pieces. The length of these pieces depends on how large you want your leaf to be. Move the strands on the left and the right out of the way for now, and it's time to make the leaf. Fold each of the 25 centimeter strands in half and place one underneath the two long strands. Then take another folded strand facing the opposite way over top of the two long strands and weave the two folded strands together. Pull them tight together and push it up to the top toward the spiral section. Continue this with all the strands, then we will form these into a leaf. Now that all the strands are tied on, I'm unraveling each of the strands by pulling them apart. I'm pulling the two long strands on either side down to the rest of the strands, then trimming them to be the same length to fit with the leaf shape. And I'm making sure to pull apart those strands as well. Now that all the strands are pulled apart, I'm brushing through them to make it even fluffier. I am trimming the bottom and the sides of the leaf, but I found it's much easier to cut the leaf shape later on, so stay tuned for that. I'm not going to show the rest of the spiral strands and the leaves in detail because they're the exact same steps as the yellow one I just showed you, but I did want to mention that I made my strands all different lengths and the leaves different sizes. I can put all the exact measurements that I used for all my different leaves in the description box below just in case you want to recreate this exactly how I made it. I finished all the leaves and arranged them all on the wood dowel. I have this can of aerosol hairspray and I'll be using it to help form the leaves into the shape I want. I'm covering part of the leaf as I'm spraying so all the yarn strands don't get blown around. And I'm using my hands to smooth down the hairspray and form the yarn into a leaf shape. Now that the leaf is much more stiff from the hairspray, it's a lot easier to trim it. Here is the finished macrame leaf wall hanging. 
I love how customizable this is. You can choose any colors you want. I really like these neutral boho colors. They actually have a bit of a fall vibe. And of course, you can play around with the lengths of the strands and the sizes of the leaves. But I love how this turned out. Let's make this Dollar Tree Apple Cart DIY. I'm using 18 of these tumbling tower blocks from Dollar Tree, and I'm painting them brown using the color Burnt Umber. I'm only doing one coat because I wanna see some of the wood peeking through on some of the blocks. Now I'm hot gluing all the pieces together to make a cart. For the long ends of the cart, I have two vertical pieces with two horizontal pieces in between. Then I'm gluing another two horizontal pieces and another vertical piece on the end. I made two identical sections for both sides of the cart. And now to connect them together, I'm gluing two horizontal blocks on either end. Now I'm hot gluing both sides of the cart together. For the base of the cart, I'm using a piece of cardboard and I'm just tracing my cart and cutting out the cardboard to make sure it's the right size. I'm also painting this piece of cardboard with the same brown paint and I'm hot gluing the piece to the bottom of the cart. For the wheels, I'm using this construction vehicle I showed in my Dollar Tree haul a couple of weeks ago and I'm hot gluing them onto the cart. I'm using this farmer's market calendar from Dollar Tree and I'm going to cut out two of the little squares on the back for this DIY, the orchard apples picture and the farmer's market one. I'm cutting the picture into two pieces to fit onto the blocks at the end of the cart and I'm using a glue stick to glue them on. I believe this is Spanish moss from the dollar store. I'm just filling my cart with it. I have this cute fall pick from Dollar Tree and I'll be using the little pumpkin and turning it into an apple by painting it red. I pulled out the stem before painting it and now I'm putting it back on. I have these little chalkboard signs from Dollar Tree along with this white chalk pen which I'm using to write apples for sale. This chalk pen was really thick, which I didn't really like, but I think it worked out okay. I'm placing my apples into the cart along with a couple of leaves and some greenery. I'm taking this little farmer's market picture from the Dollar Tree calendar and I'm going to be gluing it to the side of the cart. First, I'm cutting it into two sections that will fit onto the blocks. Then I'm using a glue stick to glue them on. Here is the finished apple cart. I think this turned out so cute, even though the painted pumpkins don't totally look like apples, but I still think it works. And you could totally turn this into a pumpkin cart and have a stack of pumpkins instead. This fall DIY is a Hello Autumn pumpkin sign. I'm using this pumpkin sign from Dollar Tree that was featured in my recent Dollar Tree fall haul. And I'm taking off the raffia bow on the front and I'll be using this in a future project. I have this acrylic paint from Deco Art in the color Cinnamon Stick. Deco Art sent me a bunch of supplies, including this paint, and I love this color. It's kind of like a reddish burnt orange. It only took one coat to cover the pumpkin with this paint. I'm using this farmer's market calendar from Dollar Tree. And for this DIY, I'm using the October page with all these different pumpkins. I'm just using the pumpkins for this DIY, so I'm cutting those out. I'm using this decoupage glue from Deco Art to glue the calendar pumpkins onto the pumpkin sign. First, I'm covering the area of the sign the pumpkins are going to go on with the decoupage glue. Then I'm sticking the pumpkins onto the sign. 
I'm now covering the pumpkins with the decoupage glue to make sure they're really stuck on. I assumed the glue would dry totally matte, but once everything was dry, the sign did have a bit of a sheen to it in the places where the glue was overlapped from the pumpkins onto the sign. So you might wanna be more careful where you're putting the glue than I was. But afterward, I went over those parts again with the cinnamon stick paint to cover it up. I got these letter tiles from Dollar Tree and I got three packs because there's only one of each letter in each bag. I was going to spell out Hello Fall, but I only had three L's. So I decided to go with Hello Autumn instead. Now that I figured out where I want all the letters to be, I'm hot gluing them in place. I have this little pumpkin from Dollar Tree and I'll be using this pumpkin in a later DIY, but for now I'm taking off the flower and using it for the top of my sign. I'm also using these maple leaves from Dollar Tree and a couple of sunflowers. First I'm figuring out where I wanna place everything, then I'm hot gluing it all down. DIY is a nature inspired cottage core fall pumpkin and we are going to be using one of these Dollar Tree foam pumpkins and this sage green yarn. I'm hot gluing the yarn to the pumpkin starting in the center on the top and going around in circles. This was pretty tedious to do and at first I was being really careful making sure to keep the strands of yarn close together so the orange doesn't show through. And I definitely got a little bit more lazy with it as it went on, so I will have to fix that. You could also paint the pumpkin first so you don't have to worry about that bright orange showing through. I'm taking more strands of yarn and hot gluing them in the gaps to cover that orange. I picked off as much of the hot glue remnants as I could, and now I'm adding this pretty lace ribbon onto the pumpkin. I'm gluing one end of the ribbon on the bottom of the pumpkin, then wrapping it around the pumpkin and gluing the other end on the bottom. I'm adding another piece of lace ribbon perpendicular to the other piece, then two more ribbon pieces in a crisscross fashion. I have this little pumpkin stem from another Dollar Tree pumpkin, and I'm painting it brown. I have these Dollar Tree florals that I cut and I'm gluing them to the top of the pumpkin. I love these flowers. They definitely have that vintage cottagecore vibe. I glued the stem on top and my pumpkin is complete. The next DIY is this pretty cottagecore hexagon pumpkin. I'm using this super cute gift box and I'll just be using the lid for this DIY. I'm starting by sanding the top of this gift box lid because there is a bit of glitter on the bees and the flowers. I'm using this acrylic paint by Deco Art in the color Spiced Pumpkin and I'm covering the hexagon lid with it. This took several coats to cover the design, but I love how it turned out. This color is so pretty. I'm taking four of these letter tiles from Dollar Tree and I'm going to be turning them into the stem for the pumpkin. I'm hot gluing them all together, making sure the letters are facing inward. Now I'm painting my stem brown and hot gluing this to the top of the hexagon lid. I'm taking these Dollar Tree flowers and I'll just be using the greenery for this DIY, hot gluing them to the pumpkin behind the stem. I'm using this lace ribbon and making a bow to glue on the front to give the pumpkin more of a vintage cottagecore look. This DIY is a fall centerpiece perfect for Thanksgiving. I have these two gourds from Dollar Tree along with these three little pumpkins and I'm painting all of them with this white chalk paint from DecoArt. This took many coats to cover the gourds since they were so orange, 
but I love how they turned out. I have this beautiful metallic paint in the color Champagne Gold from DecoArt, and I'm painting all the gourd and pumpkin stems with it. Now I'm making the vinyl letters to go on my centerpiece. I'm writing out the words Harvest Blessings with one of my favorite fonts from Defont.com, Hello Honey. I'm also inserting a couple of leaf SVGs. Select everything and attach it together. I cut out the words and leaves separately because I was using up smaller pieces of vinyl that I had on hand. And now I'm sticking my vinyl decals onto the box. I weeded out the leaves as stencils and I'm using acrylic paint to fill them in. When I was weeding out Harvest, a couple of the lines got broken, but instead of recutting it, I'm taking a black pen and just filling in the missing lines. I'm reattaching the stems to the pumpkins and the gourds. I'm filling the box with Spanish moss, then adding in the gourds and pumpkins. I'm filling all the empty spaces with fun, colorful fall leaves. And here is our Thanksgiving fall centerpiece complete. To make my air dry clay Christmas ornaments, I'm using this clay from Crayola. I'm taking about a handful of clay at a time and kneading it between my palms to warm it up. Now I'm rolling the clay out on a piece of parchment paper. I didn't have my rolling pin on hand, so I'm just using this Dollar Tree vase that I had nearby to roll it out, making the clay about four millimeters thick. For my first design, I'm making a star. This is a piece of a Dollar Tree Christmas ornament and I'm using it as a template. If you have cookie cutters, you could definitely use those, but I don't have any Christmas cookie cutters right now, so I'm just using what I have and it totally works. I'm using a tiny bit of water on my finger and smoothing the front and edges of the star. I'm poking a hole at the top of the ornament with a skewer, and this will be where we thread the ribbon through to hang it on the tree, so make sure to poke the hole before your ornament dries. I'm using my Cricut Weeder tool to add designs to my star. You could also use the end of a skewer. I'm drawing a flower design in the middle along with some short lines around the edges and little dots to finish it off. I'm making a couple different trees, starting with this one. I'm cutting out two basic triangle tree shapes. I'm adding little designs on the trees again with my weeder tool. On one of them, I'm adding dots and horizontal lines. And then on the other one, I'm doing lots of little diagonal lines. The next ornament is a bell shape, and I'm using this wood bell from Dollar Tree as my guide. I'm tracing around the edges with a knife, then peeling and cutting away the excess clay. I have a bit of water on my finger, and I'm again smoothing the edges and the top of the ornament. You don't want to use too much water here, just a tiny bit will do the trick. Now I'm adding all my designs onto the bell. For the next ornament, I'm drawing a more traditional looking Christmas tree. I have this fake leaf from a dollar store and I'm pressing it into the clay over top of my tree shape. You could also use a real leaf for this if you wanted. I'm pressing the leaf into the clay enough that it makes an imprint, but not too hard that I squish down the clay too much. I'm lifting up the leaf, then pressing it down in different places around the tree. And now I'm cutting out the tree shape. For the next Christmas ornament, I'm using this lace ribbon. To start with, I'm drawing the outline of a stocking. I'm placing strips of the lace ribbon onto the stocking, leaving the top blank as well as the heel and toe of the stocking. I'm pressing the lace into the clay, not too hard, just enough that it leaves a nice imprint when I peel it off. For the next one, I'm freehand drawing a circle, 
and I'm taking this gold leaf pick from Dollar Tree and pressing it into the clay. I left all my ornaments out to dry. It was about 24 hours or so, and now I'm very lightly sanding down the edges to get rid of any rough patches. Now to decorate the ornaments. I'm using this gold glass paint that was gifted to me by Deco Art. This stuff is incredible. It is so shiny. I love the metallic look. I'm also using this Extreme Sheen Metallic Paint by Deco Art in the shade Copper. Using both of these paints, I'm adding to the textured areas of the ornaments and also filling in all the little designs that I created. I decided to stick with the copper and the gold for all these ornaments. I like the mix of the natural look with the clay ornament and then the more glam metallic paint. I especially love the look of the paint over top of these imprinted leaves and also the lace. I think the paint really brings these to life and enhances the textures. I have this thin gold ribbon and I'm using it to tie loops at the tops of all my ornaments so they can hang on the tree. And here I'm showing you how some of my ornaments turned out hanging on my tree. I think they look so nice and it was so fun and honestly pretty easy. This was my first time working with the air dry clay and I'm definitely going to keep experimenting. For this DIY, we're making a big, beautiful Christmas wreath. First, I'm making the bow for the wreath. I have this beautiful ribbon with Christmas trees in different patterns. I'm unwinding the ribbon so there's about a 12 inch tail, then making my first loop and twisting it a couple times to keep it together. I'm making another loop slightly bigger than the first one, then giving it a couple twists. I'm making another loop the same size as the second one and I'm taking it from the side with the ribbon roll, then putting the loop on the other side of the first loop. I'm continuing with this same pattern, creating loops on either side and making them slightly larger than the one before and twisting each loop a couple times to keep it together. In total, I made nine loops for my bow. Once it's done, I'm cutting the ribbon tail to be the same size as the other side. I'm weaving some floral wire through the bow and tying it in place to keep it all together. I'm cutting the ends of the ribbon into triangles to finish it off. Now I'm fluffing up all the loops and moving them around to form the bow. To make my burlap wreath, I'm taking a roll of burlap and attaching one end to my wire wreath form with floral wire. Fold the burlap in half and make a loop, then push it partway through the first ring of the wreath form, then push another loop of the burlap partway through the next section of the wreath, and again through the top section. I'm twisting the burlap a couple times, then continuing the same pattern, pushing a loop of burlap through each section of the wreath form. Once the whole wreath is covered with the burlap, Cut it off and either tie it or glue it in place. Here is what the wreath looks like covered in burlap. These pine cones are very special because they're actually from my grandma's yard. She saved all the best ones for me to use in my DIYs and I'm so excited to be using so many of them in today's video. I'm covering the edges of the pine cones with decoupage glue you could use any white glue or Mod Podge. Then I'm sprinkling salt onto the pine cones. The glue will dry clear and the salt will give a nice light snowy look on the pine cones. I'm taking these Christmas picks I had left over from Christmas time last year. I believe they were from Dollar Tree and I'm adding them onto my wreath, attaching them with floral wire. Next, I'm figuring out where I want to place my pine cones. I'm using five for this project and I'll be hot gluing them in place. I also have these real evergreen branches I collected and I'm adding them to the wreath 
just poking them through and arranging it among the burlap. These berries are from Dollarama and I'm taking off a few of them to add to my wreath. This DIY is a hanging kissing ball. I'm using this styrofoam ball, which was 50 cents at the thrift store. You can also use a floral foam ball. You'll see I made a hook with the floral wire, but I do not recommend doing this if you're using a styrofoam ball because it was very difficult to get the wire through and I ended up not using it anyway. I have all of these evergreen tree branches and I'm using 11 pine cones for this project. I'm hot gluing all the pine cones around the styrofoam ball. I'm now hot gluing the greenery onto the ball around the pine cones. I'm taking this jute cord and wrapping it around the ball and tying it together at the top. I'll be using this to hang the kissing ball. I'm cutting off some berries from this berry pick and I'm sticking them into the kissing ball. You could also glue them in place if you wanted to. I want to tame this a little bit, so I'm going around and trimming the branches into a bit more of a rounded shape. I definitely should have done this before gluing the pine cones onto the ball, but now I'm adding a snowy effect by painting decoupage glue onto the edges, then sprinkling salt on top. I'm also adding a bit of the glue to some of the berries to create the snowy effect on those as well. This DIY is a pine cone tree. For this DIY, I'm using three pine cones and I'm peeling off each of the pine cone pieces. What I should have done right away, but I did do eventually after getting a few pine cone cuts, is cut off all the sharp bits of the pine cone with scissors. To make the tree, I'm using an empty cracker box. I'm cutting off the tabs of the box, then cutting the box in half. I'm rolling this piece of cardboard into a cone shape and hot gluing it in place. Now I'm cutting off the bottom of the cone so it'll sit flat on the table. Here is the finished cone along with our stash of pine cone pieces. Now it's time to hot glue all the pine cone pieces onto the cardboard cone. I'm placing the largest pieces on the bottom of the cone and saving the smaller pieces for the top. For the bottom row, I'm gluing each piece next to each other all around, slightly hanging off the bottom edge. For all the subsequent rows, focus the glue more on the top of the pine cone piece, pressing the top onto the cardboard cone, slightly overlapping the previous row. When I first tried this, I was gluing the second row of pieces onto the previous row, not touching the cone, and I quickly realized that was not going to work. If your pine cone pieces are not touching the cardboard cone, then your tree is going to keep getting wider and wider, and it just won't look very nice and won't work as your tree. When you get to the top of the tree, try to line up all the little pieces so they're coming to a point. Once I covered the whole cone with pine cone pieces, I noticed that there were a couple of places that seemed like they were a little bit lacking, so I'm adding some of my leftover pine cone pieces into those areas with hot glue. This DIY is a Christmas wreath, and I'm starting by using this wreath. I believe it was from Dollar Tree last year. It's just a metal wreath form with garland tied around it. And I'm also using a piece of cardboard and this galvanized joy sign from Dollar Tree. I'm going to cut out a strip of cardboard to go across my wreath. Now I'm cutting that cardboard piece out. And I'm taking this red and black buffalo check vinyl from Dollar Tree and cutting it to be the same size as my cardboard rectangle then sticking it on top. 
I'm hot gluing this cardboard piece to the back of my wreath. And then I'm hot gluing this joy sign right in the middle. I'm taking this decoupage glue from DecoArt along with some salt and I'm painting all over my garland wreath with this decoupage glue and then sprinkling the salt on top to create a snowy effect. I did end up going back over some of the places and adding more glue and more salt because once the glue dried, I could see better which parts needed more snow. I have these two wooden bells from Dollar Tree and I'm going to paint them with this bright metallic paint from Deco Art in the shade Champagne Gold. For the top of my wreath, I'm going to add a couple of these small pine cones and I'm doing the same effect, going over them with the decoupage glue and then sprinkling lots of salt on top to make them all nice and snowy. I'm hot gluing these to the top of my wreath and also adding in some white and red berries in the middle. I'm hot gluing the two wooden bells together at a bit of an angle so the two holes at the top are overlapping. And then I'm taking this bundle of red berries and poking it through the hole and then gluing all of this to the bottom of the wreath. Now I'm decorating the rest of my wreath with a couple little pine cones and then some of the Christmas berries. I have this pack of decorative filler that has lots of mini pine cones and other things in here. And I'm taking some of these out and hot gluing them around the wreath. This DIY is a cute little jingle bell wreath ornament. I have this floral wire from Michaels and I'm cutting off about an 11 inch section of it. I'm using 34 bells for this ornament, a mixture of smaller ones and slightly larger ones. They all came from Dollar Tree and I'm weaving them onto my floral wire, alternating between a smaller bell and a larger bell. I got this idea from Frugal Family Homes blog and I thought it was so cute that I had to recreate it. By alternating the bells from smaller to larger, you can see they kind of all go together and end up beside each other and it ends up looking really full and nice. Depending on how large you want the ornament to be or if you want it to be a wall hanging, you just make your floral wire longer and add more bells. I'm twisting the two ends of the floral wire together a few times and wrapping them around, just making sure it's really secure and then I'm cutting off the excess. I have this red ribbon with white snowflakes on it from Dollar Tree, and I'm going to make a bow for the top of my wreath ornament. I'm cutting off a little section and making a loop, and this is gonna be how wide I want the bow to be, and then I'm hot gluing the loop together. Then I'm cutting off another piece of ribbon, slightly smaller, and making another loop, then hot gluing that on top of the first loop. And because this ribbon isn't wired, it's a little trickier to mold it into the shape that you want it to be. So I'm using hot glue and adding little dots of it in the middle and between the sections, then pinching the ribbon together until I get the shape of bow that I want. Now I'm cutting off two more pieces of the ribbon for the tails of the bow. I'm hot gluing my bow to the bell wreath. I thought it was kind of missing something, so I'm taking one of these little white berries and hot gluing it to the center of the bow. Then I'm using this red and white baker's twine and I'm making a loop to hang the ornament on the tree.
The first high-end Etsy Christmas decor piece we're going to recreate is this wood round Christmas sign, which is $50. I'm using this wood round sign from Dollar Tree. I'm staining it with this oak gel stain from DecoArt. I'm painting on the stain, then spreading it around with a cloth. I'm covering the whole sign with this wood stain, even though we are going to be covering up some of it with paint, but I wasn't sure exactly where the lines would be, so I thought it would just be easier to cover the whole thing. I really like how this stain looks on the wood round. I think it's looking so much more high end already. I'm creating my vinyl stickers in Cricut Design Space. I added a circle the same size as my sign and two lines as a guide for how big to make the words. Christmas is in the font Hello Honey from dafont.com and the Have Yourself a Merry Little part is in the Arial Narrow font. I deleted the circle and the lines, then cut out the words on my Cricut. I'm adding two strips of painter's tape to the sign. I'm using this black chalk paint and I'm painting the sign above the top piece of tape and below the second piece of tape. At this point, I was kind of regretting adding the black paint because I thought the wood stain looked so good and I was really worried I was ruining it by painting over it with black. I was committed though, so I kept going and I'm glad I did because I think this sign ends up turning out so nice. So just have to stick with me here. Now that the paint is dry, I'm peeling off the painter's tape. The lines ended up really crisp, looking so good, which I am so happy about. Now I'm adding the decals onto the sign, placing the Christmas vinyl onto the wood stain part, then the Have Yourself a Merry Little vinyl onto the black section just above Christmas. It can be really tricky peeling off the clear transfer paper from these cursive letters. So you just have to go slowly and use one of the Cricut scraper tools to hold down the letters and just peel one at a time. I have this black, red, and white ribbon from Walmart, and I'm going to make a large bow for the top of the sign. I'm unraveling the ribbon to make a tail on the end, then creating a loop at the top. This will be the center of the bow. Then I'm creating two more loops, slightly bigger than the first one, and I'm putting them on either side of the first loop and twisting them each a couple of times. Then I'm repeating this process with two more loops, slightly larger than the previous two. I'm tying the bow all together with floral wire, and I'm also holding it in place with some hot glue. I'm cutting the other end of the ribbon to create the second tail. Before I secure the bow to the sign, I'm adding these evergreen picks from Dollar Tree. They come in a pack of six, and I'm using all six for this sign, arranging them in a crisscross fashion, then hot gluing them in place. Now I'm hot gluing my bow to the top of the sign, then trimming the ends of it so they don't cover up the words. The next high-end Etsy Christmas DIY we're going to recreate is this nativity sign, which is $55. I'm using this rectangular sign from Dollar Tree, and to fill in the two holes, I'm using a mixture of white craft glue and baking soda. I mixed a bit of it together in a container to create a paste, then I used a craft stick to push it into the holes and smooth it over and let it dry. To create a nice wood effect on the sign, I'm using white acrylic paint along with the shade Country Twill from Plaid. I'm squeezing lines of each color of paint on the sign in the direction I want the wood grain to go, alternating between the white and the beige. Now I'm brushing out the paint with a paintbrush, blending the two colors together in between. You want to go slowly with this, blending and adding paint as needed. I switched paintbrushes a couple of times so I'd have a clean one to work with because I didn't want the colors to totally blend together, but I wanted it to have some dimension like real wood. Mm -hmm. 
Now that I'm happy with the base, I'm going in with Burnt Umber Paint from Dollar Tree and I'm adding a bit over top, again painting in the same direction. This is where it starts to look a little crazy, but once you get it all blended, it's gonna look so nice. I found this free Nativity SVG online. I'm arranging it on a rectangle, the same size as my sign. For some reason, the stars from the SVG turned into little pentagons when I inserted it into the project. So I'm deleting those and inserting my own stars using the Cricut shapes. I'm also deleting the words Silent Night and Holy Night, and I'll be replacing those later. In the Etsy version of the sign, the wise men were on the left and the shepherds were on the right, so I'm flipping these images and putting them on the other side. I'm also moving each image a little further away from each other, so the whole thing is not so squished. I deleted the angel, and I'm adding back in Silent Night and Holy Night using the font Good Cream from Defont.com. I cut out the design in three parts, the shepherds and the animals together, the wise men and the camel, and the manger. Now I'm arranging them on the sign to see where I want them all to go. I'm using transfer tape to stick the designs onto the sign. 